Now the first thing that we are going to make for our Monday Thursday meal is some flatbreads. You see, the Jewish people will often eat matzos on their Seder plate. And the point of the matzo is to represent the unleavened bread, the bread that was made quickly without yeast for the Jewish people as they were hurrying to leave Egypt. It's a sign that the food is made quickly and it's with expectation that God wasn't going to wait to enact his plan. Now for these flatbreads I'm going to use some chilli, some garlic and some ginger. Now to do this I prefer to use fresh materials. First of all remember when you're using chilli that if you don't want it too hot please don't put the seeds in. The seeds are what give the chilies the real kick even though the actual chilli will be hot itself. The other thing to remember when using chilies is make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Laura could tell you the very funny story of the time that I forgot that I'd just been chopping chilies before I'd rub my eyes. And in that uh, there were some very comical experiences with trying to pour milk into my eyes to try and get rid of the painful chilli uh, sensation that was there. So we're just going to chop these chilies and just finely dice them. And then we're going to mix it with plain flour. Now when you're making flatbread you can use a variety of flours. Often you might want to use a, a, a mixture of flours. Uh, one of the ones I like is two parts plain flour, one part wholemeal flour and that gives it a lovely uh, texture to it. Uh, today, particularly because I'm using chilli and garlic and ginger and putting some extra things in, I'm just using plain flour. Now I always like a big knife where you can hit your garlic nice and hard and crush it. And that goes in there too. Uh, you can use chilli powder, garlic powder, you can use dried ginger, that works really well. I personally prefer using fresh stuff and particularly in the flatbreads I think it makes them come out really nicely. And finally we're going to have some fresh ginger. Just chop that and dice that up. And the fresh ginger just goes in the bowl. Now you want to add some salt and pepper and season it nicely. I'll put the specific amounts of how to do this on the website but please do have a look. I'm kind of doing this just by feel uh, and just because I'm used to it. I'm also going to add some garam masala into the dough and that will give it a nice flavour to it. Uh, and some sesame seeds as well. These are all optional. If you don't have them, you can just make the flatbread purely with the flour. Uh, I mean, you can make it with flour and water. Today, I'm gonna to use a little bit of yogurt. I'm going to add that to the dough, just a couple of teaspoons. And then you can use milk and water to get, add some liquid to the dough. So I'm just going to use a little bit of milk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and start forming the dough now with that just little bit of liquid. And as the dough forms, you can then add more liquid into the bowl as the dough starts to take shape. Uh, I think mixing by hand is the most fun and if you want to do this with children this is where you get nice and messy. So you're just starting to mix the dough together, it's very simple, you don't need any complicated uh, equipment to do this, you're just mixing the flour and the liquid and as the dough starts to form if you need a little bit more liquid you can add it in. 
Likewise, if you add too much liquid, the easy way to get around it is just to add in a little bit more flour. So if your dough gets too wet, then you can just add a little bit more flour. And you can start to see that this is forming nicely into a dough. Now once it's into a dough, uh, it doesn't need to prove or anything like that, but you can set it aside because the flatbreads themselves will take very little time to cook. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Now your flatbread dough is set to one side. The second thing we are going to get going is we're going to get going a little bit of an apple sauce. Now the reason that you'd see a sort of apple cinnamon mix on a Jewish Seder plate is because it represented the mortar that the Jewish people were having to use to build the structures for Pharaoh. And it was a reminder of their slavery in Egypt. Now I'm just gonna chop the apple up. You can use a cooking apple, you can use some normal apples. Whatever you've got will work. Uh, and simply dice up the apple. And pop it straight into the saucepan. So the apple and the, the sauce apple mesh that's on the Seder plate was a reminder of the Jewish people of the difficulties and the hardships that they come through. And I think it's quite poignant to reflect on that over the last year. Not because we can say that our difficulties and hardships would have been the same as what the Israelites would have had to go through in Egypt but because it's recognising it's a human experience to go through hard periods of life. And the Easter story of hope and the path that Jesus himself walks to the cross, a path of hardship and as we'll later see, bitterness. It's only having walked that path that the full experience of God's power and God's hope in the Easter story comes about. Now you just want to add a little butter to your apples and let them start to stew on a low heat on the hob. Now there's several things you could add into this. You might want to add in some sultanas, some ground cinnamon, again some ginger works some really nicely and gives this a nice little kick. And you just want to stew it over a low heat, stirring it occasionally, and it will start to turn into a mushy apple sauce, which is going to sit on the side of our plates. Well, I mentioned bitterness earlier, and as we've made the first two components, the flatbreads and the stewed apple sauce, the third component of the Seder plate would have been two sets of herbs which represented bitterness. Now I'm for this to represent to this I'm going to use a horseradish which is one of the common uh, things you'll find on a Seder plate and we're going to combine the, uh, the horseradish with some tarragon and we're going to make a tarragon and lime horseradish sauce, which again is going to complement the meal that we have. Now the idea of using bitter herbs, again is a very symbolic reminder on the Seder plate. It reminds the Jewish people of the bitterness that the Israelites had to go through and had to suffer. And for many Jewish people celebrating Passover at this time of year, again, 
the bitterness of the last hundred years and the pain and the struggle that they will have been through have a particularly poignant resonance to them. And it's a reminder to us that life contains bitterness. It's a reminder of mourning, of sadness, of all the things that we have to acknowledge if we are going to live a human life. Now this is a very simple recipe, horseradish in a bowl, I've added a little bit of mayonnaise, uh, some fresh tarragon, I'm going to squeeze in the juice of a lime, and again I think that lime represents that bitterness that you experience. And then we're just going to mix that together and that forms a nice tarragon lime horseradish which you can serve on the side of your special celebratory meal. Mmm! Tastes You can hear the sauce cooking away. So we've now done flatbreads, we've done our apple sauce to represent the mortar and the bricks of the Jewish people as they were in slavery. We've done our first bitter herb in the tarragon horse radish. Um, the fourth thing we're then going to prepare is the central point of the meal and that is lamb. Now I appreciate many of you will be eating lamb on Easter Sunday and you may want to pick another celebratory meat for this meal. But lamb is a real representation of the heart of the Passover story and then indeed the heart of the Easter story. You see on that Passover the Jewish people were told to sacrifice a lamb, a lamb without blemish and to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their houses. So when the sad story of God's final plague, the death of the firstborn son, came upon Egypt, when they saw the lamb's blood on the doorpost, the angel of death passed over and the firstborn was kept safe. It's a real poignant representation of what was needed to bring God's deliverance from that tricky and difficult situation. And it's why the Lamb is still at the heart of the Easter service. As Jesus took on that mantle of that Passover Lamb, took the pain and punishment of death on the cross and brought about hope. In Isaiah chapter 53, in a prophecy about Jesus, it says, He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And it also says, We are all like sheep gone astray, and yet the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The symbol of the lamb is at the heart of the Easter story. It's the heart of the biblical story of God's saving power, that whatever death we deserve, God took it upon himself. Now I'm just going to do my lamb very simply, I, I've coated it on olive oil, I've seasoned it with salt and pepper, I'm just going to leave it to sit in that uh, for a little bit. I've also got our fifth component, which is another of our bitter herds, and I'm going to use mint, obviously mint complements lamb really beautifully. I've just got some fresh mint leaves and I'm just going to pop them into uh, the lamb which has been coated in the olive oil and seasoned and just leave that to marinade before we do the final cook of it. Now I like my lamb nice and rare, um, you, can oven, you can oven cook your lamb, I've got some chops, you, you can use other, uh, other cuts of meat, um, you can pan fry them which is, is what I'll do later um, but please do cook your lamb or whatever else substitute that you're using and the word substitute is so poignant in the Easter story um, but as you do and as you eat it 
reflect on the Passover lamb, which meant so much for the Jewish people, and reflect on Jesus' role in the Easter story as the Passover lamb for each one of us. So we've now got five components of our meal done. And the sixth and seventh, the final two components, are quite simple. The first is some lettuce. And this is where hopefully we'll have a nice balanced dinner plate. But the fresh lettuce and our final component, which is an egg. And normally it's a boiled egg on the Seder plate is a reminder that out of the bitterness, through the sacrifice of the Lamb, God brings the promise of hope and new life. And when it's the cleanness, the freshness of the lettuce, whether it's the egg representing new life, of which I'm sure many of you will eat chocolate ones, God moves us acknowledging the sadness and the bitterness he gives himself as the paschal lamb and he brings us into new life and as we come through this current season that we've been through there is a challenge for us as individuals but as a church to acknowledge the sadness and the bitterness and the tragedy that we've experienced through a year of COVID-19 but not to dwell there. And in the food that you will see before you, God will by his power, by his sacrifice, by his promise, will bring us into a hopeful future. Now I'm gonna prepare these right at the end. My lettuce is just gonna be uh, fairly simple. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a garnish to it. Um, now normally Jewish people on the Seder plate will have a boiled egg but just because I want my meal to taste great I'm probably going to do a fried egg uh, that will go on the top. Which brings us back to our flatbreads. Now hopefully your dough has just been sitting there. I'm just going to move my chopping board. We're going to do now is we're going to roll out our flatbreads. Uh, you want a little flour to dust. Now with these flatbreads all you do need to do is to split them into segments and then roll them out flat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a little bit of a trick uh, that one of my aunties taught me. Uh, and that is to uh, layer the flatbread to make it rise and to give it uh, some beautiful layers to it. And it's very easy to do that. Uh, you just split your dough into balls uh, and each one of those will form a flatbread. You then roll them out flat into a nice circular shape. then all you need is a knife and a little bit of butter and you are going to butter the top side of your flatbread so it comes out like that now the next thing you'll do is you're going to fold it back together and you're going to do a fold into threes just like that and then you'll fold it again, just like that. And then you're gonna roll it out again. And what this does is it puts butter into the layers of the flatbread. That when you cook the flatbread, it's going to create lovely buttery layers right in the center. And the flatbread is going to start to flake apart. Now you'll start to feel the butter coming out a bit and you'll probably then need a little bit of flour as you roll it out again. And at that point, again, you can cook it if you're comfortable. Um, I like to do a second buttering. Just add some flour. And then I'm gonna butter again. 
butter the top layer and like I said it's then a very simple fold bring back together fold into the middle and out and then roll it out one more time Now when you cook this, uh, I like to cook it in uh, just a large saucepan with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to butter, again, one final side. And what you need to make sure is this is the side that you're going to flip onto. So if you butter again, it will provide the fat for the flatbread to cook in once you flip it over. Now I'm just using a simple large frying pan. And get that going, pop some olive oil in and it's a very simple, you just cook it shallow fried in the frying pan for a couple of minutes on each side. Now while we're doing that our apple sauce is starting to cook away. With the apple you may want to add a little bit of sugar into it. Again, it depends how sweet you like it. And the apple start, should start to be softening nicely. I'm only going to show you one of these flatbreads, but obviously with your dough, you just roll them out and you do them for all, well, as many flatbreads as you would like. Now our pan is getting nice and hot. Apologies for the extractor fan. Just going to turn that on now. Now while we're doing that I'm going to also start to cook our lamb. Again a little bit of olive oil into the pan. I like my lamb nice and rare so it's not going to take me very long to cook. I have discovered recently one of the wonderful things that uh, I love to use is a meat thermometer and that way you can get the temperature of the meat just perfectly just to exactly what you want. Right, I think our pan's hot enough so we'll pop our flatbread in and that will start cooking. Also going to start cooking our lamb. Now I like a lovely nice crisp bit on my chop so I'm going to Keep the fat end down as it cooks to get a really nice crisp, crispy fatty side to the chop. Now here obviously I'm just making enough for one person. Now if you're cooking for, for multiple people or family just obviously use uh, more ingredients. It's all very simple and I'm hoping at the end of it you'll get a lovely meal flip over our flatbread, again you've got the butter on the side and that will mean it's nice, so we'll cook on that nicely. Put my lamb chops away and I can start to put my plate together now as the lamb and the flatbreads are cooking. On Thursday there are going to be more recipe videos coming out and things that you might want to try on Good Friday and we're going to look at how we can understand what's going on in the Easter story by cooking some hot cross buns together and we're also going to reflect on the breakfast that Jesus had with his disciples once he'd risen from the dead and as we cook some fish together we're going to see how Jesus took the time in his resurrection to respond and to rebuild the relationships with his friends. You can watch those videos as hopefully you eat your lovely celebratory dinners on Monday Thursday. So we are now going to start putting our plates together. So like I said, 
we're going to have some fresh lettuce. You may want to turn this into a salad, adding tomatoes, cucumbers. I'm just going to keep it as lettuce as well. I'm going to add a little bit more chilli. Oh no, maybe not. Our lamb nearly cooked. We've got our tarragon horseradish. And we're going to add that to the side of the plate. I really want to do one of those fancy things where you put it down and then you smear it across. But I think that will go wrong. We've got a little bit of nice soft apple sauce. I'm going to pop that onto the side. Guys, and done. That's going to sit on there nicely. And finally, we're going to put our lamb. Lovely. You've got to love a bit of flame coming off. Our lamb and our mint on the top. The final bit of this meal, and I haven't forgotten, is the eggs. And I'm just going to fry up a little bit of egg very quickly. It will go on this meal. Now I'm sure it may feel a little bit random and a little bit different, but hopefully as you can celebrate Monday, Thursday, as you think of what Jesus would have been doing as he celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. The story of the Passover is so linked to the story of Easter. And it's impossible for us to think about what happened at the Passover without us realising the importance of what Jesus did. That egg is just about to be done and that's the final part of our plate. to say with the fried, bread, fried egg on it, it does feel a little bit like an alternative cooked breakfast. And now for the best bit. I look forward to joining you on Monday Thursday as we do the invitation part two. Happy Easter everyone. <laughs>